Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be talking all about my five top tips to pick up more marks in English language paper one section B. So this is the creative writing or at AQA you may choose the descriptive writing part of the exam. Let's dive straight in. So firstly a level up challenge. There are five words or five phrases here that are very commonly misspelt in English exams. When I mark exams, very often misspelt these words. Have a go at jotting down the correct spellings. We'll find out at the end of the video if you're right. So my first tip, there are way more marks for section B than section A. Now this only applies to Edexcel, not AQA, where you would allocate your time 50-50. So this is purely for Edexcel here, but it's very important to understand this if you're sitting at Excel. So let's have a look at the breakdown. There are 40 marks for the creative writing, a huge number of marks. Section A in total, all four questions are only worth 24 marks. So there are almost double the marks for section B. That's the first thing we need to note. We must allocate our time accordingly. I'm going to go into a bit more detail in a future slide about how we're going to do that. So uh, lots of times in the classroom, I, I hear people preparing for creative writing, language paper one is coming up and they say, well, you can't really revise for it. We don't know what we're gonna have to write a story on. So you just have to give it a go on the day. But I would ask you then to apply that to your physics GCSE, to your history GCSE. There is absolutely no way you would turn up to that exam without doing any preparation or any revision whatsoever. So not quite sure why that applies to creative writing then. Preparation is everything. We can prepare for creative writing. So how do we do that is, of course, the question. Just briefly, again, I'll go into this bit more detail in a minute. But two things that you will definitely have to write about in your creative writing exam is firstly, a setting. All stories take place somewhere, whether it's a castle or outer space. And secondly, all stories have at least one character, even if it's a character who's shipwrecked on his or her own on a desert island, you still have one character. I'd suggest in your story, you're going to have one character, possibly a maximum of two. And I'll go into why I would suggest a maximum of two later on. So all stories have these things. You can therefore do some preparation and some revision in advance of the exam. It's just like really learning Shakespeare quotations from Macbeth. There is work that you need to do in advance. So second, second tip, first drafts are always rubbish. So I've alluded to this idea now of doing some revision, some preparation beforehand. Even if you were oh, Charles Dickens, say, very much doubt he could afford to go into an exam and just write off the top of his head. All good writing is rewritten, is redrafted, is worked on and evolved over time. You need to start thinking that way for your creative writing exam and not just thinking of it as a one-off story on the day. So how do we prepare? Let's go into this in a bit more detail. I've talked about you must have a setting, you must have a character. Let's have a little look. So firstly, I suggest how you start preparing is to think of possibly no more, no more than three, but three settings that you kind of like. You like the idea of setting a story in this place. So I've given three examples. The reason I've given those three examples is because they're all very different from each other. Don't choose three different classrooms in your school. That's very samey. You want these settings to really contrast, be completely different places. And similarly, then do the same for characters. So I've got an ambitious teenager, maybe an eccentric relative, an eccentric aunt you might have. If not, you could make one up and a lonely ghost just to have three really, really different characters. And then the important bit. So let's take the graveyard, for example. You would start thinking about how you would describe a graveyard. So you start drafting, start thinking of ideas, 
cross ideas out because you don't like them. Write better ideas down. Try writing in a pencil in your revision notes so that you can rub out and write over it. Lots and lots of work you can do in advance which will make your descriptions of settings on the day of the exam so much better and your description of characters. So once you're starting to get some more original phrasing down, you're thinking, oh, yes, this is quite a good description of a graveyard I've got now. Try and think in terms of multi-sensory imagery, definitely, not just what we can see. And then try and think of some interesting metaphors, some original similes, and jot them down. And finally, I'm going to come on to this a bit more later, read some 19th century fiction. The extract you get in section A of this exam will be from a 19th century novel. So number three, over time then you are thinking of original phrases, imaginative phrases. This is called creative writing, imaginative writing. We don't just want to write down cliches and stereotypes. A very specific example for you. Let's say you had a character in your story who was very skinny. So you might think of the regular stereotypical simile straight away. He was as thin as a rake. We've all heard that thousands of times. OK, you do not want to write that in your story. It doesn't show any imagination. So it might not come straight away. You certainly couldn't think of original metaphors and similes and imagery on the day of the exam with the pressure of the exam. But weeks, or I would suggest even months before the exam, you can. There's no pressure on you at all then. So let's say you're on the bus on the way home one day and you suddenly think, oh, my character could be thinner than an undertaker's smile. That's better than as thin as a rake. So the similes, the imagery, the metaphors you come up with, the personification, etc. might not be brilliant, but it will be original. OK, it will be yours and that shows imagination. And so, of course, that will pick up more marks in an exam. Number four, timings. Absolutely essential. Let's look at these in a bit more detail. I'll put the breakdown up here and then talk through it. So, as I said, I'm going to suggest slightly different, maybe, um, timings to the conventional ones. As there are only 24 marks, this doesn't apply with AQA, you would split your time 50-50 um, at AQA, but with Excel, as there are only 24 marks for section A and 40 marks for section B, it's a good idea, if you can, to get through section A in under an hour. 45 minutes, 45, even up to 55 minutes. And then you have more time for the creative writing to plan your story, to structure it really, really well, to make sure you remember and include all this lovely imagery around setting, all these wonderful observations of character that you've been working on for months. Make sure you have enough time to get all of that down for section B and so soak up as many of, as possible of those 40 marks. All right, so obviously you can pause the video, jot these down at a later date, but the timings I've suggested there for section A, which includes 10 minutes for reading the extract, adds up to about three quarters of an hour. If you could get through it in that time without rushing, you, don't, you want to be detailed, you want to be accurate, you don't want to rush, but if you could get through it in that time, then you've got a, a good run up at uh, picking up as many as possible of the 40 marks for section B. Top tip number five, checking your work. This is something that we really just don't do, isn't it? If we're honest with each other, you've probably heard teachers say thousands of times, you must, must check your work, you must proofread your work. But if you've only got five minutes to go at the end of an exam, time is so precious in exams, you're probably not going to spend those five minutes checking for capital letters and full stops and punctuation. You're probably going to carry on writing. You're rushing to write right up until the end of the exam. Get as much down as you possibly can. But you must allocate some time to proofreading. And this doesn't just apply to school and exams. Uh, in the world of work, even at university, if you haven't got in the habit of checking your work, you might not have that fantastic job you work so, so hard to get for very long. Um, you might get exam... Uh, assignments, essays returned by your university lecturers and be politely asked to proofread it before you hand it in. 
The reason is absolutely everybody makes mistakes when we write things down the first time. They must, must be checked. Time is precious, though. That is clear. So how do we do this? What I suggest you do is not wait until the end of an hour's writing and then it seems like a, a mountainous task to go back and check it all. Every time you complete a paragraph, no matter whether it's a two-line paragraph or a ten-line paragraph, just skim your eyes over it again. You don't need to read it in detail. You've just written it. Just skim read it again and you will spot mistakes. If you start getting in this habit, I guarantee you will spot mistakes. And then don't scribble them out furiously. Just a quick line through with a ruler makes it inadmissible, means the examiner can't read it effectively and just correct it over the top. If you get in that habit, it is far more likely you'll pick up higher marks for SPAG. OK, that's my five top tips. So our Level Up Challenge answers, just check through those. Did you get all five of those spelt correctly? If you didn't, please make sure you learn them because they are used so often in English exams. Really good phrases and words to know how to spell correctly. Right, some 10 minute revision exercises. You're, in 10 minutes time, you're going to treat yourself and go and sit down and watch your favourite show, the latest episode. But before that, you can afford just to spend 10 minutes working on what you've learnt in this video. So three quick exercises or even just try number one and then try number two and three tomorrow. So number one is just Googling or searching for a picture of, I don't know, a tropical paragraph. Could be a graveyard, as we said earlier. Then try and describe that picture in as much detail as you possibly can using all of the senses. Maybe start off with the sky, what you can see, and then the clouds, maybe what the weather is like. Presumably it's very hot. What does that feel like? The palm trees, the sand, the people on the beach, etc, etc, etc. Okay. Think of four synonyms for the word happy. Synonyms, obviously, similar words. Okay. And then lastly, think of four antonyms. So logically, your antonym for happy would be sad. But we're not going to be happy. We're not going to, oh, pardon me. We're not going to be satisfied with happy and sad. We're going to try and think of more ambitious vocabulary that we could use. So instead of sad, melancholy or taciturn, maybe. Uh, misanthropic perhaps okay so if you can develop again develop the vocab you're going to use as well as the characters and settings pop these notes into your revision folder and they will help develop your creative writing right so a quick summary what have we learned in this video <clears throat> excuse me there are way more marks at edxl for section b than section a you must allocate your time accordingly First drafts are always rubbish. Please try to get out of this thinking that we go into a creative writing exam and write a first draft off the top of our heads. It will not be very good if you do that. So then, over time, think of original imaginative phrases. Multisensory imagery, personification, metaphors, similes, etc. You must keep track of your timings. If you can, do a thorough job of section A and complete it in under an hour, that is great. That will help you. And finally, skim read through each paragraph as you complete it. Just put a line through any mistakes, uh, capitalise names, add full stops, etc. Right, that is it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please take a moment to subscribe. It's completely free. It only takes a minute absolutely great for me to know that these videos are useful are being watched are helping you leave a comment as well also if there's anything you think i've missed or any tips that you would have for language um, paper one section b let us know and finally if you're interested in online tutoring please ask an adult to drop me a line at that email address that's it thank you so much for watching look after yourselves i look forward to seeing you on the next video